I thought I would pretty much talk about the ways that we save money. 2020 kind, kind of seems to be like a year of like no spend, saving money, getting organized and stuff like that. That is why I did my previous video. We had the um, organizing the kitchen and everything that seemed to get a lot of likes and views. So we're going to do things that we don't spend money on anymore in today's video. So for those of you, if you're new to my channel or you don't already know this, Mason and I are 23 years old. We are in our second home currently. We bought our first home at 19, made some money off of it, bought our second home. Um, I want to do a video on that as well, so I'm going to keep that completely separate and do a different video for how we bought our house at 19 and that will have like more tips and tricks on how to purchase like your first home if you're young or if you struggle, whatever. That'll be more of like a tips and a tricks to start saving to buy your own home. In today's video, it's going to be more of things that we don't buy that we save money on because like I said, in 2020, it seems like a lot of people are trying to do like no spend and stuff like that. I don't think I can do a whole year of no spend. That seems like a lot. I like to set little goals and then go from there. So I think maybe we'll do like one or two months of like the no spend, but it kind of got me thinking like what we don't spend money on that people are already spending money on. So I feel like this video will kind of talk about that and give you some tips and tricks on what you can swap out or what you can do to save and not spend money on everything that you do that we might not do and vice versa. So I'm not gonna ramble anymore. Here is a list of things that we don't spend money on anymore. So the first thing is last year around this time, we ran out of our stockpile of paper towels. And I didn't feel like going to buy a case of paper towels and spending the money on paper towels because Mason and I tend to use a lot of them and once you have them there, you kind of use them more, right? So I didn't feel like spending the money on that. I followed it was wasteful. I started using my hand towels and then I discovered our flower sack towels. I love the material of them. They actually feel kind of like paper towels, but a little bit nicer, kind of more like a towel material. I don't know, you kind of have to feel them to understand, but love the material of them and they work so much better and they save money in the long run. I believe I got a pack of 10 for like, seven dollars at walmart i keep them right in the drawer next to our kitchen sink and once they get dirty instead of throwing them in the trash can like you would do with paper towels we just throw them straight into the wash and they're ready to go and then keep doing it reuse reduce recycle so it seems like pretty simple and kind of stupid right but once you think about it and once you break it down if you use two paper towel rolls a week and you multiply that by a year, let's just say $2 for a pack of paper towels, you use that for a year, it's like $104 a year. So it actually really does add up. And it seems like it's so simple because it's like an everyday thing that you use. So you're just used to having those paper towels on hand. But when you break it down and you see the money in your hand, go ahead and take $104 and stick it in your hand and see if you want to put it in the envelope and save it for your paper towels or if you'd rather have it in your bank account. So if you don't have them, you don't use them, you don't see them, you don't use them, you just make do without and all is good. So this one is pretty obvious, but a lot of people do this. Um, bottled water. We were guilty of it for a really long time because it's nice to have on hand, it's easy to grab, go, whatever, throw in your bag. And we were guilty of it. But a long time ago, we got our Yetis. Now you don't necessarily have to have a Yeti, you just have to have a reusable cup, pretty much. The Yetis are our lifesavers because they keep your drinks nice and cold for 24 hours with the ice in them and everything. I mean, I think everyone pretty much knows about Yetis, but you don't have to have a Yeti to do it. Just a reusable cup. The water bottles, they're nice to have on hand, but if you add it all up, it is a lot of money, okay? Now our fridge has the little water spout thing that has like the filtered water in it. So I like to keep two Yetis. I have two Yetis, one for like at home that I always keep up and filled with water. And then I have a like a travel Yeti that um, seals so I can like stick in my bag and stuff. And I'll have that one ready to go for when we travel over, or when we're at Disney or stuff like that. I was gonna give you a little tip there, but I'm gonna save my little tip for that Disney tips and tricks. So stay tuned for that one too. But um, 
Stop spending your money on bottled water, get a reusable cup, and start using it. So to break this one down like I did for the paper towels, we save over $300 a year by not buying the water. And that's pretty much just averaging two cases a week, and that's not even nearly enough as much water as you're supposed to drink, but that's just an average for you. So to go along with the water is soft drinks. Now, if you know me, you know I am a big Diet Dr. Pepper fan, but if you don't have it on hand, you don't drink it. So it kind of just rolls with that. But anyway, we don't really buy it every week. If we do buy it, it's like a special treat and that's it. Um, but for our water, we do like to have on hand like the little um, Kool-Aid squirts or like the little Mio um, things to help like flavor our water. Or you can also use frozen fruit or fresh fruit and that kind of helps switch up the water so you're not like sick of water. Even though you really shouldn't be sick of water because you're supposed to drink a lot of it. But that's what helps us so we don't get sick of it and it changes it up. Now not only do we not buy soft drinks for the house, but we also do not buy them when we go out to eat and this saves a ton of money. We always, always, always get water when we go out to eat and that is like super important. Seems small, seems stupid, but add it up. So we normally, if we do go out, we go out somewhere like Outback or Applebee's, like somewhere casual. And if you take that average, I think they're like two, 50 per drink when you go out so if you multiply that by two because mason and i would both be getting a drink that's like five dollars per meal every time that we go out even if we only went out once a week it's still a lot of money or a little drink that you're gonna sip and it's gonna be gone <laughs> so the other thing that we don't spend money on would be like fresh cut fruits and veggies and other things that are like pre-done for you at the grocery store we always buy our stuff whole so if we want something guess what you're buying it and you're slicing it and you're dicing it and you're cutting it all up because they actually charge you if you buy something that's pre-sliced pre-diced whatever they charge you for the labor to have it cut up and it's handy dandy as it is and how nice it is to have it already done for you no mess whatever they charge you for it so always buy your fruits and veggies, not cut. <laughs> now, I know if you're a female or a lot of my lady friends, we like to go out and get many and petties all the time, and that stuff adds up. So what I like to do there, I mean, I know like self-care is important, you know, but if you know me, you always see that my nails and toes are done. But my like tip is do it yourself. So these are my nails that I did myself, they still look great. I still look like I'm taking care of myself. My toes are done. Let's see my toes. They're like a light gray. But I do it myself. And I mean, every once in a while, it's okay to go out and like treat yourself. Or if you have like a coupon or someone gives you a gift card. But a lot of people go out and do this weekly, monthly, whatever. And it really adds up. So a Manny and Petty pretty much averages about $50 total, right? Let's just say $25 for your nails, $25 for your toes. And if you go, let's just say, every other week, so twice a month, let's add that up for the year, you're spending like $1,200 a year on your fingers and your toes. So this is another like small one, but when you add all the small stuff in, it really does add up. Mason was going to get his hair cut like every two to three weeks, and now he tries to push it and in between those um, like haircuts, I trim it for him around his ears and his neck and stuff. Now you don't have to be a hairdresser, I'm not a hairdresser, but I watch the videos and it's pretty easy as long as you like follow and use like the guard and stuff. But in between those haircuts, I go ahead and trim his hair and that does save us a lot of money because his haircuts are like $20, $25 every time he goes. So he likes to push it out and I help him in the middle. So if you're in my generation, then I think I'm the millennial generation, right? I think. Anyway, if you're in my generation, this probably isn't a big deal to you, but this is a big one for some, and it's cable TV. I hate our cable companies around here, let's just say that first. But 
you know, when you move in, they give you a package for like your cable and your internet and then like you get a landline. I don't even know who uses landlines anymore. We don't even have like a hookup for it. But anyways, they give you a package deal when you first move into your house, you get like a really good deal. So they come in, they install it, you get your cable, you're all set up, you're all good, you got your Wi-Fi, and then once you get your bill and you add the taxes and fees and stuff like that and installation, sometimes that's free, sometimes it's not, but then your bill goes up. And then the next month, your bill goes up even more because now you're no longer a new customer and it's just like this whole fiasco. But cable does cost a lot of money and um, we pretty much just use like Netflix or we hook up to my mom's direct TV and we watch cable from there. But most of the time, we're just on Netflix. So if you ask me about a show and I have no clue, that's why, because we are Netflix people. We did get lucky and we got Disney Plus because Verizon, my mom's company, um, gave them a year free for that or two years or something like that. So we did get lucky enough to get Disney Plus. And I haven't used it yet, but I, when I got my new phone, which is another story, when I got my new phone, they gave you Apple TV for free. So I think I have that for a year as well. But we legit like don't even use it. We are mainly Netflix people. Another thing we save on if you are a workout buff, I think they say. Um, we don't spend money on gym memberships, so we will do it ourselves. Mason is lucky enough to have a gym at his work. They have like machines and weights and stuff like that. I used to have a couple of weights, but I actually sold them because you really don't even need them. If I exercise, then me and Lila go for walks or you know we're always at the park, so that is a lot of exercise. And come on, YouTube nowadays, you can literally look up any workout video you want if you want to target your arms, your abs, your butt, literally go on YouTube, search for a workout and do it at home. So everything I do, I do at home and I like it that way. You don't have to worry about people watching you and judging you. So this one kind of all combines together. I know this is like a big fad like, I don't know, the past couple years, but subscription boxes, so like FabFitFun and stuff like that. Um, and then what kind of ties into that is like greeting cards, so like if you're gonna wish someone a happy birthday, we wish it over the phone, text message, we're not buying greeting cards. Magazines, which really isn't my generation, but there is still magazine subscriptions out there. And then, like I said, the subscription boxes, which is like a huge ordeal these past couple of years but we don't do any of that either mason is really into books but we don't buy books we actually use our app i think it's called hoopla you download your um, library card to it and then you can just download whatever books if you want an audiobook or if you actually want like a book that you read there i think there's movies and stuff on there as well so as long as you have a library card you can download hoopla and um, get everything right on your phone and that's also good because you can download the audiobooks, like I said, and Mason loves listening to those on his way to work. So for us women too, I guess men too, but not really. Kind of just us women. Um, costume jewelry. I don't buy costume jewelry. I know I see like some women's different necklaces, bracelets, earrings all the time to match certain outfits. So cute. I do love it, but... I like to keep my stuff simple, so I have my diamond rings, my diamond tennis bracelet, my watch, my charm bracelet, my earrings, my diamond earrings, and like that's pretty much it. This also helps me reduce clutter because jewelry takes up a lot of space once you have a lot of it and it keeps it nice, simple, and clean. And I, when you invest in like good jewelry too, you're not always wasting money and replacing it once it breaks. So that's a good investment. So the other thing we also did is get out of the mindset of worrying about what other people think of you, especially trying to impress people that you don't even care about. So I used to have a Mercedes SUV, which don't get me wrong, it was luxurious and I loved it so much, but it was a gas guzzler and it's just not worth it. Who cares what kind of car you drive if you're saving money and if it's paid off and who cares? So we traded in our cars and we got 2018 Hyundai Elantras. They were fully loaded, but compared to a Mercedes SUV and the money that I was spending on gas, saved us money in the long run. Both of our brand new fully loaded Hyundais cost less than my SUV Mercedes. I think I was spending like 
$72 every time I went to go fill that tank, and now I spend like 20, sometimes less than 20, and it lasts me more than a week. And then that's not even like talking about maintenance. So sometimes you don't always have to buy the most like cheap thing out there because sometimes it does matter. Quality over quantity because you want to know that what you're buying is going to last because that is going to save you money in the long run. Perfect example would be my handbags. I have three Louis Vuittons and I have not purchased a pocketbook in over 10 years. Ever since I was little, I have always been into purses. If I can find a picture, I'm gonna insert it. But I used to carry around like my little leather coach pocketbook. Um, but instead of buying four coaches a year because you know they don't last, they snag and they have like strings and stuff like that. Um, I've always wanted a Louis Vuitton. So in 2010, I was almost 13 and my dad bought me my first Louis Vuitton pocketbook and I carry that purse every single day. It's in mint condition and I know it's gonna last me forever and it holds its value and I'll be able to pass it down. So in 2010, the pocketbook was $1,200, which seems crazy to think about spending that on a pocketbook, but if you add that up over the 10 years that I've had the purse, it really makes sense. So let's just give a tiny example. So if you were to buy a Michael Kors, let's just say $300 every year for 10 years, you're going to spend $3,000 anyways. So if you've always wanted a Louis, pretty much could have had one if you didn't waste it on other things. It is now 2020. I still carry that exact Louis Vuitton pocketbook. It's classic so it really never goes out of style it's always good to think about quality over quantity um, but enough of the rambling and let me just say one more thing too I do have a little bit more Louis Vuitton accessories and stuff that I probably didn't need well I'm not gonna say that because I have sunglasses and I've had those sunglasses for years now too and I'll probably never ever need another pair of sunglasses so enough justifying my Louis Vuitton addiction. I mean, I have the keychain, some wallet, sunglasses, but they've all lasted over the years. Quality over quantity. Okay, stop rambling. On to the next. Well, going along with the quality stuff, fast fashion, I don't really buy clothes and replace them all the time. Um, I like to buy classic things that don't really ever go out of style. So i much rather spend $100 on my Lily Pulitzer dress than spend $100 and keep replacing it with other clothes. So if you know me, you know I have a Lily Pulitzer addiction as well, but some of those dresses I've had for like six years and they still look brand new and they still don't go out of style. So they're perfect for that. And don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of it like, it's summer, you gotta go get summer clothes. It's winter, you gotta go get winter clothes and stuff like that. But everything, just take the time to add it up because even if you're just going out and spending $7 on a shirt, $7 every day, come on, add it up. Another thing we do not spend money on is our electric bill. Actually, we kind of do. We pay like $9 to $11 to stay on the grid because we have solar panels. Um, if you're curious to see our whole process with that, um, the video is called like we spent $18,000 or something like that for our solar panels and now that we have the solar panels though we don't have to spend money on our electric bill so we eliminated our electric bill and our house is powered by our solar panels. So I could sit and talk to you guys all day about tips and tricks that we do that we don't spend money on anymore and what you guys can do if you're interested in saving money as well. Lila just woke up from a nap. She needs to go get in the shower. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I will talk to you in the next one. Keep it blissful, everybody. Bye. You want to end it for me? Okay, end it. Keep it blissful.